welcome everyone to the Digital Marketers Graduation Party. Uh, my name is Dan Gretsch. I'm the CEO and founder of BizHack Academy. And uh, this is my absolutely favorite day of every semester. Uh, we are going to uh, share some extraordinary stories of business owners uh, who are changing the trajectory of their lives and their businesses uh, by leveraging thought leadership and lead generation. Um, and um, my name is Dan Gretsch. Uh, as I said, I uh, am a business storyteller. Spent 20 years as a journalist uh, doing journalistic storytelling and, and the last decade uh, doing uh, telling business stories online, also known as digital marketing, and then teaching others how to do it for themselves. And more than anything else, what I'm really passionate about um, is, is helping others, uh, helping small businesses, particularly uh, businesses in the BIPOC uh, or uh, women-owned businesses. Um, we've partnered with a number uh, of top small business support organizations to uh, help support the small businesses, the minority-owned businesses, the uh, women-owned businesses in our community. And we won a number of awards for our work doing that. And the reason that I do this work is deeply personal. Um, my mother was a school teacher she learned, uh, she was a school teacher in the Philadelphia public schools and her father, my uh, maternal grandfather, was actually a physics instructor at Central High School, the second oldest public high school in the United States. And so teaching runs straight down my mom's side of the family. On my father's side of the family, my grandfather, Satur Gretsch, was a coach in La Liga, the Spanish professional soccer league, one of the greatest soccer leagues in the world. My father was a coach, my sister was a coach, and so it's no accident at all that I honor the legacy of my maternal and paternal grandparents by creating a training and coaching company. And it's been truly the honor of a lifetime honoring their legacy and helping see others grow. And, and the work of a coach the work of a teacher, of an educator, is to inspire in others the best version of themselves. And what you're gonna see today is the best version of some of the most talented entrepreneurs you're ever gonna meet. Introducing the Leads of Legend and the Biz Linkers. The Leads of Legend are cohort 20 of the Digital Marketers Edge program in lead generation and the Biz Linkers are cohort two of the LinkedIn Business Edge Thought Leadership Program. So a quick celebratory congratulations to everybody. Clap your hands for uh, the amazing uh, participants of both of our programs that we're celebrating here today. Um, Alex, uh, I wanted to give you a moment to say just a quick uh, word or two about your experience leading the Digital Marketers Edge uh, this semester. Uh, we're going to see you again uh, when it comes time to uh, deliver graduation certificates, but I did want you to say a few words about what it's meant to you uh, to, to lead uh, this, this course. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Thank you for having me here today, and I'm glad to be a part of BizHack, and also uh, really honored that, as Dan mentioned, you business owners who, who wake up every day and are, are building something that is making the world better. And um, to, to have you share that with us, the way you do, being transparent the way you have been is, is truly an honor. And, and so the digital marketing piece, the vehicle is just obviously one piece of the, 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 the relationship, but it was getting to know you guys and working with you um, week in, week out. So very happy to be here and um, you know, looking forward to seeing the presentation. So thank you. Thank you. And please, guys, uh, Leads of Legend, please send your love to Alex and the whole teaching team for the amazing work and dedication they've shown to you this semester. And, and now I want to welcome the lead instructor of the LinkedIn Business Edge, also the course creator, Cheryl Cattell, uh, the founder and CEO of All Maya. Cheryl, please say a few uh, words. Uh, Cheryl uh, is an extraordinary um, uh, 
uh, guide and light, uh, and I'm excited to to hear what your what your thoughts are. Yeah, I you know I am just honored to be on this journey with you guys. It's um, this is the second cohort for the LinkedIn Business Edge, and I have to say that. You definitely learn what you teach, and I've learned as much from the, the participants in the class as hopefully I've been able to give to them. It's always, it's always an adventure, and um, I really admire and, um, like I said, have learned so much from each one of you, and I'm excited to, to watch you continue to grow. Um, and that's the great thing about LinkedIn. I get to watch you like a stalker, but I don't have to be a stalker. <laughs> so um, I, I really am excited to see where you all go from here. So thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, Alex and Cheryl, I'm going to ask a small favor of you guys today, which is for each of the presenters today, I'd like you to do just kind of a brief introduction of them. Um, You've worked very, very closely with them uh, in class and just say a few words about their business and say a few words about um, the work that they've done. Um, and uh, I'll also say, uh, offer a, kind of a few words about my personal interaction. I've worked with almost every single one of the folks in the program. So um, I did wanna also acknowledge our extraordinary coaches, uh, Carolyn Quinton, Michael Pace, uh, and Nathan Kruger, all three are successful business owners in their own right. One of the kind of signatures of the BizHack approach is we love to take successful professionals uh, and allow them a chance to give back by sharing some of their hard-won expertise. And, uh, you know, I, I really adore the three of you. Uh, Carolyn, uh, it's been such a joy to get to know you over these last two cohorts, and, and Michael, uh, we're going to be having a big announcement about Michael uh, towards the second half of today's presentation. Nathan, uh, Nathan is uh, overseeing uh, massive growth uh, of his small business, leveraging a lot of the techniques uh, that we taught when he took this exact program uh, a couple years ago. And so it's just been wonderful to be on this journey with each of you guys. So today we're gonna feature case studies of real life campaigns, uh, both on thought leadership and lead generation from each of the programs. We're gonna have a graduation celebration. Every graduation needs one. Uh, we'll take a class photo. Uh, we'll give out our highest honor, the Biz Hacker Awards, and, and we're gonna raffle some uh, amazing thank you gifts as well as have a special musical surprise at the end. So I did want to share with you some kind of exciting stats of the impact that BizHack is having uh, in our community. We have uh, presented to um, more than 3,500 uh, businesses um, and trained more than 3,500 businesses since 2017. This is kind of our North Star. We are looking to make this number uh, to 10,000 uh, within uh, by 2025. So we are on our way. Um, we have given out 834 certifications, um, 814 in digital marketing and lead generation, and 20 in the LinkedIn course, uh, the, the newer of the courses. And uh, I'm very, very proud that as part of our giving back to the community, we have now hosted 66 master classes for the community since the start of COVID. Uh, we've been recognized for this work, for this uh, contribution to the small business community with uh, three national awards. And uh, we've actually now have a partnership with the second highest elected official in the state of Florida, the Miami-Dade mayor, uh, to provide this to more folks. And, um, you know, Alex and Cheryl and all of the lead instructors and and BizHack certified instructors who've been part of this masterclass series, thank you for the gift that you've given of your knowledge and expertise. Uh, and I'm looking forward to Carolyn and Mike uh, and Nathan, you guys being part of the series as we continue. We're, we have um, re-upped with the mayor's office for 15 more masterclasses in 2021, uh, 2022, and we have a great lineup coming up for you guys. All right, so let's get to the main action, which is the case studies from the Digital Marketer's Edge Cohort 20 Leads of Legend. This is the Leads of Legend, an extraordinary group of businesses, 
congratulations, guys, on you made it. Two months ago, uh, you were uh, digital marketing new newbies. Now you're digital marketing ninjas. And boy, did you have to work your tail off to get here. And we're excited to showcase some of that amazing work. Uh, before we get started, I did want to give Nathan uh, Kruger, if he's here, a chance to say a few words and reflect uh, on his experience uh, coaching uh, this semester. Welcome, Nathan. Hey, Dan. Hey, everyone. Um, I just want to give a quick shout out to you know all my students, Issa, Melissa, Alex, Jen, uh, Rim, and Crystal. Everybody put in a lot of hard work and, uh, you know, multiple ads. A, a lot of the students did more than just, you know, the two ads that were the minimum required for the class. So a lot of uh, a, a lot of uh, stress and under the pressure and everybody dealt with it. And I can definitely um, sympathize with that. <laughs> so I uh, just uh, congratulate everybody and a shout out to my former teacher when I was a student, Cheryl, she's, I see she's in here today. If anybody's looking to do anything with LinkedIn, you got to get a hold of her. Just a little shameless plug there for Cheryl. So she is a master at that. So, um, and then of course, from one Biz Hacker Award winner to the next, Jim, uh, it's an awesome job, showed up on, you know, early first one in class every time and put a lot of extra work and hard work in there and congratulations it shows. So thanks everybody. And uh, Nathan, I wanted to uh, ask you to share just a little bit. So one of my favorite stories in the history of BizHack is Nathan says to me, Dan, I'm really sorry. Uh, I need to hop off the call. I need to go shovel pigeon shit. Uh, this is true. This is a true story. And I'm like, Nathan, it's Saturday morning. What are you shoveling pigeon shit for? He's like, well, listen, Dan, I had to kind of cut off work early so I could coach my students and I didn't get finished shoveling pigeon shit, which is part of my job uh, running a pest control business. And so uh, anyway, uh, thank you. Thank you, Nathan, for your dedication and for taking time away from shoveling pigeon shit uh, to work with our participants. I did want to ask you, though, you are one of the, I mean, you were the Biz Hacker Award winner. You were just so amazing, just so generous and giving back. It's why we recruited you to be a coach. But you've also leveraged this knowledge to bring your son into the business and to grow at a massive rate. Could you share with us just very quickly what happened next after you finished uh, the, the lead generation course? What did you do with that knowledge and how you've grown? I, I just, you know, <clears throat> not relying on other people and being able to do it our, my, ourselves and not having to pay, you know, agency fees and actually getting to see our growth, you know, taking our leads through our automation funnels and uh, just nurturing it ourselves. And it, it's, we're growing our residential side by leaps and bounds. We're, we're in December, it's 38 degrees right now. And this is a slow time of year historically for us and we're just signing up multiple new customers a day you know we're usually just a couple in December and we blew past last year of December within two days <laughs> so it's it's insane the growth we're having right now um, as a, a direct result from digital marketing and and part of it is you're just investing a heck of a lot more money and not, not only yeah so talk about that as well like not not only did you kind of figure out a proven process for marketing, but then you invested a lot in actually leveraging that process to actually get the word out? Oh, sure. Yeah, it's definitely not free. <laughs> it's definitely not cheap, but our return on investment, you know, our cost per acquired customer is half of what it is on Google. You know, we track all of our leads, all of our, you know, um, sources and all that stuff. So. It's definitely uh, costly, but at the same time, you know, it's paying off. But Beautiful. Yeah, so, so what I wanna point out just really quickly here is marketing is work, but marketing with a proven process behind it, with intentionality and that's not random acts of marketing, can really allow you to grow your business to wherever you wanna take it. And the reason Nathan is spending five, 10 times more per month is because in two days, he beat entire months of performance year over year, right? Because it's the closest thing you'll ever get to making money grow on a tree. For every dollar he invests, 
he makes three or four dollars and five dollars. There you go. So if you were in a situation like Nathan, where if you gave one dollar, you got five, would you keep investing? Yes. Right. And that's 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 when marketing gets just unbelievably exciting for a business owner. Right. When you unlock its potential by by stopping committing random acts of marketing and you start to grow the business in a really intentional way. And I I'm just so, so happy for you, Nathan. I know how hard it is to manage growth of that rate, but you brought your son in, you know, it's become a family business. And uh, it, it's just, it's just, this is, this is why we do what we do. You know, this is me living forward the legacy of my grandparents, the legacy of my mother and, and really trans uh, us transforming lives and businesses through the amazing coaching and instruction of people like Alex, Cheryl and the others. So congratulations on your success, and we're excited to continue our journey with you. Um, I did want to uh, sort of, without further ado, introduce our first speaker, um, the amazing Crystal Lachey and Rim uh, Ben Brahim from Corporate Lounge. And uh, Crystal and Rim are uh, extraordinary talents. Uh, they are consultants. Um, Crystal has um, overcome incredible uh, challenges with health to uh, participate and complete the course and be voted by her peers as one of the top presenters. Uh, and I believe we are going to benefit from hearing, I think she's right now in the hospital. And so we're going to have Rim uh, present on her behalf. Uh, Alex, did you want to say a word before we get started? Yeah, I mean, I think um, it, it, like a lot of the the other participants, they were very committed. But what I knew right away with, with Crystal was just her level of commitment. So she would watch not only, she'd show up to the lab for Nathan's lab, but also watch the recordings of Michael's labs. And so she was just super engaged, reaching out on WhatsApp, totally committed. So I knew she was going to be successful. So I'm excited to see what they do in, in the future. Perfect. Rim, you're up. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, uh, Rim couldn't make it, and we received a video with that sound from both of them, and so we will have to skip this presentation so far, uh, and I'm sorry for the inconvenience, um, but we, we, we don't have them here right now. Uh, no, no problem uh, whatsoever. Thanks for letting me know. Um, all right, uh, so next up is uh, Brendan, so let me, um, and Brendan, um, uh, is it gonna be Brendan or Ryan who's presenting for this next one? That'll uh, be me. Ryan, yes. Okay, perfect. Hello, everyone. Um, hey, give, give me a <laughs> sec just to do a quick uh, celebratory intro and then you're up, okay? Cool, sounds good. <laughs> um, you know, Brendan Stefano and Ryan Kemp uh, are particularly close to BizHack because they are our webmaster and data management team. Uh, Brendan uh, and Ryan are brothers, uh, and together they run Zulu Shack Creative, which is a web dev and SEO company. And um, I got to say, uh, it is such a pleasure to work with technical marketers and teach them how to tell a story. Uh, so uh, really looking forward. Uh, they also have great accents, which makes them even more fun to work with. Uh, Alex, uh, I know you worked uh, closely with Ryan and Brendan. Anything you'd like to share? Yeah, no, I, I you know, from the beginning, I'm always um, in awe of marketers who are as experienced as both Ryan and Brendan are in SEO, very complex sort of uh, channel for marketing. And, um, you know, them having that... Um, I guess just just the the, the commitment and and um, of coming in and taking a course like this because uh, as you guys know most most marketers they they just want to learn it on their own and do it on their own so the fact that they came here with sort of you know just an open canvas and not super critical um, I knew it was gonna be it was gonna be great and they they're great guys too they're very funny so um, yeah looking forward to seeing the presentation thanks guys. Thank you both. Uh, flattery will get you everywhere. Uh, let me share my screen. Can you guys all see that? 
Well, yeah. Um, thanks again. Uh, you know, it was uh, one of the most eye-opening, fantastic, sort of intense courses uh, I think Bryn and I have ever taken. And to kind of uh, talk a little bit about what Alex said, you know, we know one specific type of marketing. We know SEO, we know uh, organic, but this was eye-opening because this was this was ads and this was Facebook. So it was something new for us. And Brendan and I both always try to push ourselves to learn something new because especially when it comes to marketing, or, or web development, it's easy to just rest on your laurels, know your one your one type of marketing or your one development. And, uh, you know, that things move so quickly that in a couple of years, you're out of date. So you have to keep going. Um, so a little bit about us. On the left there, you'll see uh, me and Brendan. I'm in first grade. Brendan's in sixth grade. Um, I'm looking super cool. Brendan's looking a little cooler. He's got that uh, uh, what's called Zoolander blue steel thing going on. But that's where our story starts. So that's us in South Africa in primary school. And um, at least for my specific side of the business, SEO, which is content writing and storytelling, uh, it started there for me with my brother. He would come home from school and he would tell me what he learned in history class. And he'd talk about Shaka Zulu. He'd talk about, um, you know, Caesar. He would talk about the great conquerors and the, uh, the great people of our time. And, you know, he would tell me these stories and I just loved it. I was enthralled. Old, and that got me into storytelling. So from a young age, I started to write a lot more. And I, you know, a couple of good English teachers have pushed the right way here and there. And, uh, you know, writing became my vocation, thankfully, as part of SEO. Um, and that's a little bit of the reason why we're called Zulu Shack. You know, we're named after a great conqueror. And Brennan and I will always joke about being, you know, the impies, the warriors in the trenches, like the Zulus were trying to make sure that businesses uh, are successful. Um, and then our life uh, together continues. The, the middle picture is us with our family. Um, and, you know, we, we've had, I think one of the reasons why we work so well together is that we have the same work ethic. We have the same same uh, belief structure and you know we we kind of want we we're both the type of people and this always sounds like a line but we're both the type of people where if our if our customers aren't doing good we don't sleep well if our customers are doing well we are high-fiving and it's you know it, it's a kind of a blessing and a curse the blessing is you know we get good business and, and we we help people the curse is that we don't sleep well um and then you know we want to find like-minded people that care as much as we care about clients to work for us and sometimes that can be a challenge but the final picture there on the right was actually taken on monday at a big client meeting that went very very well and very successfully so it kind of it fits the whole circle there or from first grade hanging out watching the soccer game um all the way until monday Day when you know it kind of came full circle so um a little bit about us um you know i've mentioned again we you know we did seo and web development specifically so this was a little bit out of our realm um and so this was kind of all new to us the ppc side and, and mike and alex were just fantastic mike was such a big help on on figuring out what some of these ins and outs were that we needed to follow um our campaign was traffic we did the video um our demographic was we focused on men for this one but in seeing the results from a lot of the other biz hackers who who were also going to focus on just men but opened it up to women and, and got really good results that way in our next run of ads we're going to do both um and then we had more of a broader um age range um as well uh we're looking for obviously business uh owners decision makers that sort of stuff and uh irresistible offer was an seo checklist and i know what you're thinking a checklist uh, another checklist oh great this is going to be fantastic you know what the world needs more of checklists but here us at because our checklist we went in with a little bit of a different approach uh it's conversational one so it's not just do this do this do this do this and number two we focused on um you know things that business owners could do that were the easiest with the most reward so the whole idea behind it was you know in 30 days if you follow this stuff which is a little bit easier to do in terms of seo you'll get the most reward out of that and then the, the, the checklist itself is very conversational it's like we're just talking to you it's no technical language um so that was our big push we did go against Alex's uh, specific recommendations in the beginning of the course was don't do something you haven't sold before, you know, stick to something you have done. And we, you know, popped our collars and went, no, nah, no, nah, we'll do what we want to do. No, we didn't do that. Sorry, Alex. But we did try do something uh, that we hadn't tried before. So our results are a bit mixed, but that's what this is about. This is learning. This is growing. So we kind of went against the class there and, and, um, and you'll see the results in just a bit. 
so we did our ad um michael pace was a real big help with the language here we you know we talked about unlocking the secrets of google you know a lot of people think seo and, and even parts of ppc and facebook ads it almost seems like magic to them it's this black box that they don't know how to understand so we figured let's kind of tap into that language that mindset where you're unlocking a secret hey there's a secret and here's how you can unlock it and you'll get the results anyone in marketing can tell you it's not necessarily a secret it's just a lot of work and and the information's there we just condensed into a thing that would really talk to to our customers and then we use some really direct uh, language like start ranking now um, and then you can see on the right hand side our landing page you know rank your business locally in just 30 days download the free checklist um, our customer journey is growing because again, we started with something we hadn't actually sold. So, you know, where some of these other businesses um, and some of the other presenters that might come up, they've done enough of these sales where they have the journey figured out in some sense, it's just putting it into paper and, and figuring out some of the other pieces. This was all new to us. So the basic journey we have filled out here is just clicking the ad, filling out the form, getting the checklist, receiving the follow-up uh, emails, offering services, and then signing up for SEO. Uh, Brennan and I, Brendan and I have already discussed since even making this that we're going to change this journey. We're going to add in a couple more things. So we're already, our minds are already turning in like where this can go from here. So this is our ad budget. Uh, we did $94. We got uh, 7,600 impressions, got about 75 clicks at a CPC of uh, $1.25. So the ad looked like it was working well, but then the leads just dropped off. The conversions, the sales just dropped off. So it made us think that we have to update the landing page and then we might have to kind of uh, figure out if there's a symb symbiosis between the two that we aren't really seeing. If people are clicking the ads and not uh, converting on the landing page, either the ad's not telling them what's what to expect or the landing page isn't getting those conversions going. So that's going to be our next big step is, is looking into that. Um, and then some of our biggest learnings. Um, I, I talked about this with Alex and, and you know, the leads of legend people uh, last week, but I think one of the biggest things that left an impression was Alex put up this gif. We're, we're having this discussion, it's two hours long, we're all learning and Alex has just got this gif of the rock sitting in a, in a ring with a laptop. And we're like, what's this gonna be? And, he, and he's like, just hear me out, he clicks it. And it's the rock going, I don't care what you think. And he throws the, the laptop. And the, the idea behind that, what I think Alex got through to the whole team and especially left an impression on, on us is videos don't have to be fancy the ads don't have to be fancy you, you know sometimes you can put in you can overthink things especially if it's your business everything needs to be perfect sometimes just do it sometimes just actually get some stuff done put it out there do a little 15 second video and see what happens um so that was a big thing to get us over that sort of perfectionism that i think a lot of business owners have um one of the the other things that i really enjoyed was that bubba watson theory of if you're um you know, if you want to target a certain, uh, you know, group of people, you got to think about things that only they would know about. So if you're going to target someone who, who's into golf, yeah, you can always say Tiger Woods and Golf Digest, but they would know someone like Bubba Watson, who's not necessarily the top of the rung, but he's, he's well known enough that if you're in that industry, you would know his name. So that was an interesting thing that also stuck with us as well. The parallel personas, uh, targeting people that were the closest to the decision makers. That was an interesting way of, of doing that within PPC. I've, I know that for SEO, but within PPC, that was a, that was kind of an interesting thing to play with there too. Um, and then at the, the bottom, I just kind of say the thing I've already said a million times, you know, we started with something that we hadn't sold and we, we tried something new. And so we already know now it's better, obviously, to start with something you have sold because you've got a lot of this information already at your fingertips and it's easier to build momentum. And what's next for us and Zulu Shack Creative and me and Brendan and oh my gosh, I mean, I think still we should have a reunion in a couple months, maybe a couple beers. So we'll put that on there. Yeah, we'll get that going. Um, but for now, we're definitely going to continue with the Facebook ads. That's been um, that's been a really interesting way to, to get customers. Um, and again, we're all we are all organic and that's where our mind has been. So seeing this has just opened up a whole other side of marketing that we don't really uh, go into. Um, our, also, our next step is to uh, offer not just the SEO checklist, but on a thank you page, um, get people to actually pay us to fill out the checklist and to do strategies for them for a nominal fee. Um, there may be even a, an opportunity to offer someone a 30 minute private one-on-one -on -one session um, after they download the checklist to talk them through that, which might be another way to convert. And then something I, you know, this course made me think about too was 
Um, you know, we we don't do we don't do enough organic that maybe we could um, on Facebook as well. So now that we're doing the ads, I'm looking at well, there's Facebook groups for SEO, there's Facebook groups for social media, there's Facebook groups for local SEO and Google My Business uh, tips. And so uh, part of what we've been doing now is going into those groups and answering those questions, which is something we used to do on Reddit and we got you know really good results with. So now we're pulling that into to Facebook to actually bring our organic expertise into it as well and hopefully convert people where they're like, wow, this guy with a great accent answered my question perfectly. Let's totally sign up with him and give him all, all our business. Um, so anyway, uh, that's the end of it. I just wanted to say, you know, from both Brendan and I, it was it was a fantastic course. We learned a ton. Um, I mentioned uh, last week, but I'll say it again, the patience that Alex and Miriam and Mike showed everyone where we, you know, we're clicking around a screen. We don't know where the button is and just the amount of patience they showed us and the amount of expertise and knowledge that they they imparted on us on in such a small window of time uh, was incredible so we, we will be forever grateful and um and that's us thank you oh dan i think you're uh, yeah. muted sorry bravo uh and and it's been such a pleasure to work with you and your brother thank you um so uh alex and jennifer is next up um uh marianne do you know which one of the two is going to be talking hey um no, I'm not, I'm not sure okay. about it. I'm sorry. No problem. Um, uh, when I do this intro, uh, I'm going to uh, actually invite uh, their, their boss and the CEO of Flipper Cinema to say a few words. I've had the joy and pleasure to work directly with you, Jeff, and uh, I see you nodding your head no, but I'm going to do it anyway. Because <laughs> you're amazing, man. I'm sorry. Uh, it's been such a joy to get to know you uh, and your uh, fantastic team. So uh, we'll get started here now. Uh, it's with a special pleasure that I share with you guys uh, the amazing story of Flipper's Cinema. Flipper's Cinema is one of the most unique entertainment venues here in South Florida where we're based. Uh, they are a movie theater, but they also have been pioneers in creating uh, gaming rooms for social gaming. Uh, they had a hundred uh, Sony PlayStation set up before COVID, uh, where uh, the local gaming community gathered and had wholesome fun. Uh, and then they could go and watch a movie and eat popcorn and really delicious pizza. And then obviously, like every cinema, uh, their business was severely disrupted uh, by the lockdown, by COVID and the quarantine. Uh, and yet Jeff and his team have persisted. Uh, they do own a hardware store, which has probably benefited from home improvement mania. But I did want to take a second uh, uh, before we go into the case study to welcome the, the CEO uh, Jeff Condon, I've had the pleasure to work directly with you, Jeff, and I just want to say, uh, you know, I've worked with a lot of folks, um, uh, more than 700 businesses, and I've never had a business owner who is a more voracious consumer of my book recommendations than you. So thank you. Thank you for that. And thank you for uh, being a wonderful uh, coachy. I loved every minute of working with you. Well, thank you, Dan. It's uh, I'm actually uh, glad that we found you through the Goldman Sachs program. It, it actually helped out quite a bit. And uh, the time that we've spent together is uh, truly made what uh, Jennifer and Alex have learned uh, very valuable to me at this point. I had a conversation with Alex this morning and it was uh, the investment in their time now allows me to look at the uh, the monies that I'm going to spend over the next couple of years and know that I'm going to spend it in a way that's very effective. And your program has also opened our eyes to the fact that we can use the marketing to actually try ideas and get the response from our local community as far as what's possible, as opposed to just trying to advertise to them. And then in our personal conversations, the fact that we can actually uh, Every customer that we go after doesn't have to be an immediate sale, but by expanding them and turning them into customers is valuable down the road. So it, it allowed me to look at marketing in a, in a way that I used to throw a bunch of money at marketing and never knew if it was going to work. Now I can throw smaller amounts of marketing and get feedback that I was never available before. So it's like I looked at it and it's like what they've learned and what they're able to do from this point moving forward was worth every penny that we spent to do it because it was very valuable. 
So it's like, I, I truly love it. And the books you recommended, freaking awesome. I suggest everybody read them, but they were awesome. <laughs> so I recommended Small Giants. I recommended Who, which is fabulous for hiring. Uh, I talked to you, I think, about Traction. Um, those were a couple of the ones that I talked about. I did want to just say one other thing. Flipper Cinema gets 200,000 people through its doors each year, but had not yet systematically collected their contact information to build long-term relationships. And I just want to, I, I say this because this is an opportunity that any retail store uh, needs to grasp, which is every person who walks into your door is someone who you want to build a digital relationship with. And the way to do that is to give them something of value to inspire them to give you their contact information. And there's no better time to do that when the, than when they're physically in front of you. And so one of the most exciting developments uh, that Alex and Jennifer uh, have been developing is a systematic process for, for inspiring your uh, guests to give you their contact info. And you have some very uh, aggressive but achievable goals for doing that. But what we're going to talk about now uh, is the amazing program that you guys uh, are launching to help rebuild your gaming room uh, with a next generation of social gaming space. And I'm looking very forward uh, to hearing Alex and Jennifer share a little bit about that. Over to you guys. Hi, um, I'm going to be the one presenting today. Let me just get it all loaded up. Okay, so this is, uh, we're from Flippers, and what we were trying to do, it's a tool, uh, we've done it in the past, but what we're trying to do is revamp a space, which is the game room. Um, uh, and Alex, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Uh, could you please share your screen so we can see your presentation? <laughs> I thought I was, I'm sorry. One second. You can see it now? Okay. Yep. Yeah, one second. Sorry about that. So, um, again, so we're basically just recreating the space because it closed down over COVID and we are trying to gather information from our community to see what that next step is. So that is basically what our presentation is about and what we'll be going through. So our why, or really the why of the owner, Jeff Condon, is when he was 28, he went through one of the most eye-opening experiences. It led him down the path that he walks today. He went from having stability to having what could fit in a single suitcase. It was an experience that he will reflect on forever. It took him out of his comfort, comfort zone and thrusted him into a new environment. From that moment, I, he knew that they could take all of the material belongings, but they could never take his drive. From that failure, there, from there, failure was no longer a fear. He discovered his true joy in life, and that was, whew, I'm sorry, uh, and that was to help others in any way he could. Uh, he continues that joy in the businesses that he is a part of, including the hardware store, which is pictured here, um, as well as Flipper Cinema. Take, um, from creating a fun environment that families and others can enjoy, taking time to employing those who have never been employed and teaching them valuable skills that will move them forward throughout life. He is Jeff, Con Jeff Condon and his purpose is to create an environment where people can gather and make everlasting memories. So here are a couple photos. Um, to the left, you've got Flipper Cinema. It's just a small portion of our arcade in the center. That is what once was our gaming facility. And then to the right, like I stated before, that's uh, him in the hardware store. So moving forward, the challenge. In the past, we had a social gaming room with over 100 Xbox systems, Nintendo Switches, PS, uh, PS4s and it was closed due to COVID or we closed the area um, because COVID happened. So now we're trying to find local gamers that will help create a new social gaming facility. And we're currently trying to gather information from the community to help guide our rebuild. 
through our, our whole objective was to gather information how to build the social gaming room because we did close it down and we want to change everything from the systems that we have to the games, the setup. It, it's from the bottom up at this point. So we want to get information uh, in regards to what we should be getting or wh what they're into now since it's been almost two years since it's closed. Um, so, uh, we're targeting social gamers ages 12 to 28 within a five mile radius of flippers, so the local community. And our irresistible offer was to help those social gamers um, be a part of us rebuilding this area. So here's our ad down below. And we just basically did a lead form, asked about five different questions. And our main, uh, our main goal in it, like I stated before, was to get that information to help us move along the path. Uh, our target audience uh, shown here was just anyone who's into gaming, whether it's professionally or it's just for fun. So people who play Nintendo Switch, VR, Xbox, PS4, PS5 now, um, that is who we were targeting. We Overall, we got about 15 leads. As you can see here on the left, those are the questions that we asked, which were, are you a pro gamer? Do you miss social gaming? How do you game? Your most anticipated anticipated game of next year and what what they think the hottest game is out this year um so here are our results we got a little over seven thousand impressions we reached um almost six thousand we got 15 leads 81 clicks uh like i stated before it was our intent was just to mainly get information so we achieved that goal. Uh, we weren't really intending to make any sales at that point. Um, let's see. Here is a little bit uh, more of our survey results, uh, the questions that we asked. Uh, here's a sample of uh, what they thought the hottest game was out of this year, what they basically stated. The other kind of represents the individuals who just picked um, one game. So as you can see there, everyone, I guess, is loving God of War. <laughs> and then down below, you'll see what they're playing. So the most of them are playing the PS5. So that does help us because our, our old room was mainly revolved around Xboxes. So that definitely helps um, in the rebuild. And then how you can see in the bottom left, a lot of people miss social gaming, which is a good indication um, for our path because that is what we're trying to bring back. Uh, our top three ahas were the unique customer journey, identifying that each customer ad has a different customer journey that requires flippers to target, target them specifically. Uh, number two, consistency is key. It, it, um, it's important that we plan out our ads, which we're already looking to do, and making a calendar for both businesses so we have everything mapped out. And the importance of a landing page, which we're currently working on. Um, so that we can track how many people go from our, you know, our social media to our physical landing page, just so we can track it better. Um, and then what's next? So we want to grow our community and within growing our community, that's just reaching back out to them, communicating with them, um, that plays into gathering their information so we can kind of touch base via email, um, so we're in the process of actually gathering emails from both businesses, the hardware store and flippers. Um, and then of course, always make it fun. That is uh, behind flippers. We are an entertainment business. So just to have that social media aspect and make our ads and what we're trying to do fun and having a plan of, oh, I can just read. Uh, so basically having a plan and just having everything mapped out, like I said before, um, and knowing what we're doing and that we're all on the same page moving forward. And that's it, guys. Wonderful, perfect, thank you. Um, Alex, anything you wanted to add? Uh, I know that you worked closely with them as well as Nathan over the course of the semester. Yeah, I thought that um, Alex and Jennifer, they, they did such a great job thinking outside the box. Um, 
in in the approach to lead generation. It was more uh, a survey type focus group. They were collecting information that's going to really help them optimize their business uh, as a whole. So I thought it was a unique way of doing lead gen and it worked. And now they have this information. So great job. Wonderful. All right. Uh, so our next up is going to be um, uh, Jim McDowell. Uh, so Jim, get ready. We're going to give you a quick um, uh, intro and then you'll be up. So let me go ahead and share my screen. All right. And Alex, I'll ask you to do a, say a few words as well. I know you've worked closely with Jim. Um, this next case study uh, with Jim McDowell is one of those business owners where you know from the very first minute of the very first conversation that you're going to have a transformational impact on this person. And uh, I just knew that Jim was our ideal customer. He was hungry. He was smart. And he was a guy who, like many of us, did not grow up with an iPod, uh, an, I, an iPad in our lap. Um, you know, he came, like many of us, to digital and midlife. Uh, and his uh, need to understand that and master that uh, was essential for the next phase of his career and his growth. And so uh, we love folks like Jim and we love partnering with folks like you to allow your greatness to shine in this new digital world. Uh, Alex, I know you worked closely with Jim as the lead instructor of the program. You want to say a few words before we give Jim the stage? Yeah, sure. Well, <laughs> Jim was the first in everything. He was the first to class. He was the first to book his one-on-one uh, -on -one with me and with the coaches. And so that level of commitment and intensity was is is great, you know. And then he also, um, you know, shared with me his love for Bucky's. So, <laughs> and and of course, he's in Georgia. We're in Florida, so we had a lot of things in common. But just his passion for what he's doing for the association and the drivers, which he's gonna talk about here, um, and just showing up to class. And also he helped a lot of um, uh, the peers here, you know, the rest of the group. Uh, he actually solved the, one of the problems that we were having with a Facebook campaign. And look, I couldn't do it. And Jim came back to, to one of our participants and said, hey, I know what the problem was. We didn't do this or that, whatever it was. And I said, oh, well, maybe we'll make Jim the, the, the honorary uh, instructor now. So great job, Jim. It was awesome having you here. Thank you, Alex. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, you're all dismissed <laughs> after that great introduction. I don't think I can live up to that. Anyway, I'm uh, I'm Jim McDowell, and I'm uh, I'm actually an independent contractor, a business consultant. But my main client is the Association for Delivery Drivers. And uh, in my in my early career, I was a um, I was a lobbyist, and. Uh, while being a lobbyist, I got a, I got a real sense of how trial lawyers and regulators really pound on small businesses. Uh, and there are, particularly when it comes to compliance training, which uh, many businesses have to do to stay up to speed with the federal government, et cetera. So uh, I saw how they could, you know, their, their approach when anything from harassment to fines and penalties, ruining businesses. So I, I have a real, bad taste in my mouth for, for those folks, but that actually made the Association for Delivery Drivers a perfect client for me because it's made up of over a thousand small business owners who are the, uh, the perfect target for trial lawyers and, uh, and regulators. So it was a perfect marriage. And, and as my slide, next slide says, it helped me turn my passion into a purpose by, um, by working with the Association of Delivery Drivers. So let's, uh, let's take a look at the campaign and I'll kind of walk you through that. First of all, the, uh, <clears throat> our goal was lead generation. And uh, we decided to use the graphics from my awareness campaign because it was either so uh, outrageous or something because we had like 3,500 impressions and 12,000 playthroughs. So that they not only looked at it, they must have liked it. They looked at it a couple of times. So, so lead generation became our uh, our target, our uh, campaign, and then our target audience. I got to tell you, Mike helped me a whole lot with this, and so did the thesaurus, because we we knew we were going to go after couriers and drivers, but there were some other words that we needed. So, uh, so Mike and I worked through that and ended up looking. 
probably at an audience on Facebook of about 140,000 people. So, uh, and as the graphic shows, once we began to get the results, the demographics really pretty much reflects our, our current uh, membership as far as men, women, age, et cetera. So, um, so that was the, our target audience. And then my irresistible officer office offer, wait for it, no surprise, would be a free compliance training course, which is bloodborne pathogens. So we started with a, uh, with a thumb stopping video which I will show you now. <clears throat> so the compelling message um, of our campaign was, if you'll join the association, and we'll even let you join for for five bucks for 30 days, because the membership is usually $59 a year, we'll give you the free bloodborne pathogens course. So our call to action, once they observed everything on Facebook would be to click on, and it would take them to the membership page on our website. About 36 hours into our campaign, I began to panic because when they went to complete the membership, it's about three pages of text. And I'm envisioning somebody on a cell phone trying to do that. So I got with my coaches and with Alex and I said, and they said, why don't you try an A-B test? So we did. And so we decided we were going to flip the script and I got with, the, with my uh, client and he said it was okay. I said, let's give them the course and then we'll market membership to them. So we flipped the script. So in our, our um, second... So in our second uh, campaign, or our, B, our B test, it was a, um, hold on, wrong page. It was a simple carousel ad, had two, two slides, free training, and then something to give us a little bit of street cred, who we are, A4DD. So we ran that, uh, so with that, with the B test, as soon as they clicked at the end, they were taken to a, a landing page which told them how they were gonna get their course because we're gonna have to send it to them. But that gave us an opportunity to market as well. Uh, you know, for $5, you can join our association, take us for a test drive, try us out for five bucks. And that was, uh, that really fit in with our, um, then our, our excuse me, um, with our journey, which would be, once we received the lead, we would call them, and if we couldn't get them on the phone, we would email them. And then we would continue to market to them and upsell them. And as I said in my original presentation, this is a work in progress. It's evolving because as we, as we get used to doing this, we'll figure out better ways to, to get to an end. But the, of course, the end result being conversions. Um, and now let's look at the results. So the, uh, while the association of delivery drivers has a mission to equip delivery drivers, their metric is membership. So when someone joins, they have to pay some money. That's how we pay the bills. And a membership is worth about 150 bucks a year based on membership fees and other services. So here was the results of our lead generation ad. So we, uh, our budget was $195. So we had, to, we had to bump that up a little bit when we went to the B test because we were, we were two days into our seven day campaign when we did that. So from that, um, from our overall campaign, the lead generation, we had about 7,500 impressions, <clears throat> excuse me, and 52 link clicks, which resulted in 15 leads of, spoiler alert, that ended up being 18 by the end of the, the, uh, the test. And then we had one sale, uh, which was $150 in, in revenue. Um, if, we look at the, if we look at the metrics, not great, but we're learning, right? So our... Um, our return on spend is 77 cents. But again, we're, uh, as we turn those leads into, uh, into conversions, we think that will be much better. So uh, my ahas <clears throat> and learnings from uh, uh, being with BizHack, one was how to learn how to run an A-B test. In other words, if something's not working, try something else. And uh, fortunately, Facebook will let you do that. Um, also learning how to do different uh, types of 
of uh, campaigns using video or carousel. And then how to get leads, measure the success of the campaign because it's all about measuring what you find. And then I have to, <clears throat> I have to add an aha to, uh, that actually is a little current. And uh, yesterday was my 70th, 70th birthday, Dan. And, uh, <laughs> and so you can, put, <clears throat> you can put in your marketing, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. So, <laughs> so, and that's one of the values of BizHack. And so what's next? Well, you know, obviously we'll continue to use this newfound knowledge with, uh, with the Association for Delivery Drivers. And we're, we're on the cusp of launching a new uh, course on food safety for delivery drivers. And what a lot of people don't know is there's literally millions of people driving around America delivering food to your door. That's a ticking time bomb <laughs> if, it's not, if it's not taken care of correctly. So food safety is a big deal. And um, we found out in our research that 30% uh, of delivery drivers sample your food before it's delivered. <laughs> so, so if you're a happy meal, if you're three, if you're a few uh, fries short of a happy meal, now you know why. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then last of all, uh, we do some work. I do some work with, uh, with high school students in Louisiana. We train about a thousand students a year on workforce prep. These are kids that are uh, not college bound. And we teach them uh, how to find a job, things like customer service, business math, how to prepare a resume, how to use LinkedIn, et cetera. So uh, I think the future is bright. Uh, I appreciate everything I learned and all the great coaching I got from everybody. And, and I'll definitely be an advocate for, uh, for BizAct going forward. Thanks, everyone. Sergio and Jim. Happy birthday to oh. you. <laughs> Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. <laughs> Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, Sergio. And Sergio. 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 Happy Excellent. birthday <laughs> to you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. You're very kind. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. One of the interesting things about Zoom is it mutes, like it doesn't allow multiple voices to melt. So there's some new technologies that are coming out to allow for the harmonizing over Zoom type experiences. But anyway, happy, happy birthday. Uh, and uh, the whoever said that you can't teach an old dog new tricks lied when it came to you, Jim. You've been an extraordinary, extraordinary uh, participant and we've been blessed to have you. Um, guys, I'm gonna share a quick poll to kind of break up the action and also share some statistics with you. So this is a poll um, about um, a lot of folks have come to me, uh, Megan and others, who've said, um, you know, we're, we're not ready for BizHack to end. Uh, like we're just getting started with the momentum is coming. And so we offer a couple ways for you guys to continue working with us. Um, this goes for both the LinkedIn and the Digital Marketers Edge class. One is continued one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, with your coaches. Uh, I know a lot of you uh, want to meet every couple weeks or every month with them, and we'd be happy to make that arrangement. They'd be happy to continue working with you. So let us know about that. Uh, and then the other thing is for companies that are really kind of looking to take their business to the next level, uh, we offer uh, much deeper consulting strategy and accountability services. And so uh, you'll see a little bit more uh, about that uh, in the second question. And obviously we'll hop on a call and explain how that works and, and share with you more. But if you are interested in kind of taking this to the next level, uh, we have uh, started working very closely with a number of BizHack alumni uh, and we're getting really phenomenal results and we're very proud uh, to continue that work with you guys if it's something that fits into your plans. Um, so uh, I, I wanted to share some of the uh, really kind of breathtaking, uh, while you guys are filling out the survey, about half of you have filled it out. I would just ask that all of you guys fill it out. Uh, no worries at all if it's a no thanks. Uh, you won't hurt our feelings. It'll actually save you and us time so we don't reach out unnecessarily with you. Uh, one of the big lessons with marketing is a maybe is usually a slow no. And so you'd much rather just drive the participant to a no thank you uh, than try to bother them. Uh, you know, we don't want to spam you. You, you know, we, we value your time. Uh, a no thanks is a very constructive response. So please do respond to the question. About half of you guys have filled it out. Uh, and uh, if you're a guest and want to fill it out, uh, that would be great uh, as well. So um, 
I wanted to share some of the really impressive results uh, uh, that show the work that you guys have done this semester. Uh, you started in the blue and you ended in the red and anything that's above a seven really represents mastery, basic mastery of these skills. And so while there's definitely a few areas where there's still some opportunity for growth, you guys should feel really proud of how much you've learned in such a short amount of time. And it's easy to lose sight uh, of what an intense uh, and productive learning journey this has been. We know concretely that each of you in just two months have increased by nearly 13% your knowledge on the digital marketing test. And the results speak for themselves. Uh, you guys ran as a group 43 campaigns, spent about $2,500 on those campaigns and generated nearly $50,000 in new revenue, uh, a 19.2X uh, return on ad spend, which is phenomenal. Next, we're gonna talk about our thought leadership course, the LinkedIn Business Edge. These are the biz linkers. And uh, it's been wonderful to see uh, this amazing group. Uh, I wanted to give uh, Carolyn Quinton, one of our coaches, an opportunity to share some of her thoughts uh, about being a coach of all of you. Hi there. I wanted to tell you that both in the labs and in the one-on-one -on -one coaching, that I consistently saw progress as we went. And I know Cheryl just said a few minutes ago that she could go on your LinkedIn and stalk you. So I think we should rename ourselves these um, <laughs> the Stalkers Club, Cheryl. I think you and I are in the Star Stalkers Club. Um, but I really enjoy seeing your progress on LinkedIn. And more than that, even the community the community that was being built by by the second lab, we had people helping each other. I mean, I was amazed at how much you helped. And then we had the pods on Wednesdays, 12 to two, which meant that we could put our link up in there. And I and I know that by doing that, we then go on that each other's LinkedIn page, comment, and sometimes it's appropriate to share. So we were able to learn more about each other, our businesses. And I want to thank Dan and Cheryl and everybody that was in the class of LBE, including Marion's support for all that you all did. I have seen incredible outcomes and you are about to see some of them now. Thanks, Dan. Absolutely. And you have been just, <laughs> Carolyn, an extraordinary uh, addition to the team. Um, and um, I'm really excited that you're gonna uh, actually even do some work with, with my wife on the next stage in her journey. So uh, there's no greater compliment uh, than sharing my family with you. And, and I feel very <laughs> blessed to have you be part of the larger BizHack family. So thank you. Thank you, Dan. Oh, you bet. Um, all right. Well, I am ready uh, for our next uh, amazing presenter. Um, I think uh, th that we right now maybe, uh, and Suzanne, you're going to be up. Let me just call this up. I, I think that Suzanne may now be officially the greatest biz, hack, uh, biz hacker of all time. Uh, she's one of a handful of people uh, who have actually taken both of our courses. Um, but uh, in addition to that, uh, is just such an extraordinary human being. So I'm going to do a quick introduction. Uh, uh, Cheryl, I would like you to say a few words before we uh, have her, uh, uh, Suzanne, present. Suzanne Jewell was my first Facebook ad client. Uh, and I'll never forget it. I ran an ad that was a click to call ad and I got exactly one phone call and the phone call was from the amazing Suzanne Jewell. Uh, and anyone who spent even half a minute knows that Suzanne is someone who loves to talk. And, and so it was a really great initial conversation followed up by uh, a, a lunch uh, and what has now become uh, just a beautiful three-year friendship and partnership. And uh, Suzanne is, in addition to being the mindful entrepreneur and extraordinarily uh, gifted and talented entrepreneur, uh, is just an inspiration to me and anyone who meets her uh, because of the, of the intentionality, the love, and the purpose that she brings into everything that she does. We at BizHack focus on purpose-driven, growth-oriented entrepreneurs 
And I literally cannot think of a better avatar for our ideal customer than you, Suzanne. So thank you. Thank you for being our inspiration. When we write marketing copy, we are thinking of you. And I wanted to welcome uh, Cheryl uh, onto the stage to say a few words. Uh, another person who's on an extraordinary spiritual journey uh, as a marketer, Cheryl Cattell. Yeah, so Suzanne, um, as you can see, she her tag is the mindful entrepreneur. Um, she does amazing mindfulness and resilience training. She provides pockets of peace and I think a ray of light wherever she goes. I'm really, really proud to call her my friend as well. Um, I think my favorite uh, thing was to learn every time she would do these videos, uh, This she was like in this idyllic paradise, like uh, the, the Garden of Eden re revisited. And I asked her, where are you taking these videos? It's just breathtaking. Oh, I'm living at a Buddhist monastery. What? Who lives at a Buddhist monastery? But um, I mean, this is these are the kinds of experiences that Suzanne not only experiences, but creates. And um, I'm excited for her to share with you what she created on LinkedIn, of all places. Take it away. You guys got me so weepy here. I'm, um, I'm just really honored. Um, I literally just looked to the right of that screen and I was like, I think it was uh, Sally Field that grabbed her Emmy and she said, oh, you really like me, you know? And I just looked at, I was like, wow, that's what she felt. Um, I'm honored to be here. I'm, I'm, I'm the big Dan fan. I love what he's doing. And I, through that, have had this gorgeous opportunity to meet Lilia and now Marianne and Cheryl and Carolyn has become my, my bestie in coaching and all of our cohort this time for LinkedIn. We're just brilliant people. So I'm gonna share with you um, what it is I'm doing as the mindful entrepreneur. And let's see here, where do we go? And what a learning journey this has been for me. All right, thumbs up. Can you see it, guys? All right, so this is actually my final presentation that talks about how to move beyond burnout, which is where I started. That's how I got my tush on a kush and toward Mind for Resilience, which is about training for leaders, teams, and humans. This is my new logo that I'm using for this training that is called Bounce Back Ability, and it's all about human resilience. And what I'm going to first share with you is the story of me that I've had this gorgeous opportunity through, I think, three sessions now of Digital Marketing Edge and now two sessions of LinkedIn to polish. Dan's right. I do love to talk. Um, I went to a performing arts high, high school. And actually, it's a few years before that that my business story begins, which was back in Michigan as a girl in 12th grade, or I'm sorry, sixth grade, which made me about 11 or 12 years old. I was considered to be uber talkative and super bright, and my parents figured they were going to put me in a different school. So they sent me to a nature center for one whole year as an 11 or 12 year old. And every single day we had to go into nature and for 45 minutes we had to sit in an environment where we paid attention to what was going on outside of us and we had to write in a little journal what was going on inside of us. Little did I know, fast forward to my life of moving to Miami and I would become a global TV executive who happened to have my foot on the brake and the gas pedal almost all the time. And that brought me to burnout. And burnout brought me back to the circle of what I used to do, which was going into nature and learning how to pay attention on purpose in the moment, non-judgmentally and with curiosity, which is what mindfulness is all about. And since I began with Dan, I also completed my two-year degree at Berkeley's Greater Good Science Center as a certified mindfulness meditation teacher. And I now, as my purpose and my passion and my love, help stressed out leaders learn how to avoid burnout, manage overwhelm, and become mindfully resilient. So in our journey with LinkedIn, one of the biggest things we had to do that's like DME is we had to create our personas, our first and our second. And interestingly enough, with the work that I've been able to do in LinkedIn, I just broke 8,000. I'm at 8,008 followers as of today. 
Um, and that's been a long, slow, organic. Dan knows when I came in, I did not have that many people on Facebook or Instagram. I was like, dude, LinkedIn is where I live. And LinkedIn is where I apparently shine. So that journey has brought me to someone who recommended me through LinkedIn that I did not know personally, but saw the work I was doing around the tenets of what it means to pay attention on purpose in the moment non-judgmentally and why it's so good for productivity and wellness at work, recommended me to a wealth management firm. That wealth management firm wanted to do something for Stress Awareness Month, and I got hired because of my presence on LinkedIn for an $1,800 one hour mindful wellness training. And that all happened while I was in this program. I took that woman and turned her into one of my personas. So when you look at what it is that we were identifying, someone in HR, someone who was young, someone who educated me that during the great resignation, people are leaving, or as she put it, raising their hands for burnout and for mental health reasons. So mindfulness at work became a beautiful solution to that problem. You'll see on the right, the keywords that I used using all of this great uh, training that Cheryl gave us and that Carolyn walked me through about how to go in and learn what keywords and hashtags were going to be those that I was going to use consistently. And here was the thing that blew my mind about something I did within the LinkedIn program that I was taking. That infographic you see was the piece I created to land that piece of work. And Cheryl had taught us in class, post infographics, see what happens when you post them. On the left, there's a little snapshot of the top of it. And on the right, if you go down to the very bottom and look at it, that's 9,244 views of that infographic. So what I created for my client communication that became the tool that sold me for an $1,800 uh, opportunity also became the number one most followed uh, infographic that I've had. It's the most followed piece I've ever had. What I'm going to be doing in terms of thought leadership is moving forward to use human resilience to help people better manage their stress. And in the midst of this program, I'm actually creating instead of a mindful toolkit, you're going to get a mindful jewel kit. And in your jewel kit, you're going to get all sorts of tips and techniques that will help you actually be able to manage overwhelm and stress because mindfulness is basically today's secret sauce at work. I want to share some of my ahas that will probably be more heartful and less technical than some of the others. One is that BizHack creates community that really helps me on my entrepreneurial journey. Like, I've come back five times. I mean, like, seriously, it's clue that community really works for me. And I really, really enjoyed this opportunity with Carolyn specifically to have that coaching support. And Cheryl had invited me to, to join. So... The two of them for my third aha is that the female presence of having them as leaders was a lovely alternative for me as a wise woman of a certain age than just having guys at the front of the room. And I appreciate that and I thank you both for having been that. And then this is just my love and shout out to Dan, which is that watching him grow since I took my first program with him in 2017 has continued to put fuel into my tank. It just uplifts me to no end. And I, I feel like a, a proud neighbor and, 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 and a proud friend. My year is going to include my very first virtual summit. I am going to be doing the Mind for Resilience Summit on Earth Day, April 22nd of 2022. Prior to that, I'll be doing some live events, probably at one of my favorite nature centers. And we're going to be doing why immersing your body in nature reduces the cortisol in your body to be able to help find more calmness and wellness. I'm also converting my website to Kajabi, and I'm also gonna be offering a direct coaching option through Kajabi as one of those tools. And last but not least, I wanna give the good news that I don't know if Cheryl even knows, I had participated in the LinkedIn content creators competition. They invited me to be part of their challenge grant. And while I didn't win, I did win, um, they, they were paying people $15,000 to do content. But what I did win was three months of free LinkedIn. I'm going to be included in their three-month training program beginning in January. Um, and I've been approved for LinkedIn Live. So that all happened while I was in your program. Thank you. I'm honored to have the time. And, and, and if you've not taken LinkedIn, by the way, and you're only so far a DME, get thyself into the, into the LinkedIn program too. Thank you.
Congratulations for all of your success, Suzanne. It is richly deserved and more. Um, we're running just a few minutes behind, so I'm gonna move right into our next phenomenal presenter, uh, Jerome uh, Hutchinson Hutch from ICABA. So let me do a quick intro and then it's over to you, Hutch. It is a special treat to introduce my brother from another mother, Jerome Hutchinson from ICABA. Uh, everyone knows him as Hutch. And um, I, I'm literally getting goosebumps as I make this introduction because, um, you know, I've learned a lot over the last year and a half about privilege and equity uh, and the challenges that uh, black professionals and black people in this country face. And, and one of the great mentors and guides and educators of me on that learning journey has been Hutch. Um, and ICABA is a worldwide professional network of black professionals that has been the single greatest source of BizHack alumni of any partner we've ever had. We have had more than 15 black owned businesses come through our program directly because of Hutch and his uh, incredible network. And we were overjoyed and honored to be foundational uh, sponsors of Black Professionals Month, uh, where we featured many of those black owned businesses in a panel discussion. Um, I'm the son of an immigrant. I self-identify as Hispanic. I know I look like a big white guy, but I do understand the journey uh, of coming to a new country and starting from scratch and building something uh, brand new. Um, and um, it is the honor of a lifetime for me to serve businesses that are underserved, uh, women-owned businesses, BIPOC businesses, Black-owned businesses. And uh, I know that you have dedicated your life and your soul to this work, and, and I'm so blessed to be a partner with you in it. Hutch, uh, over to you. All right. Well, thank you, Dan. And, um, you know, Dan, your life's work here with uh, bringing digital marketing to as many people as possible uh, is continuing to have major impact, you know, on a lot of business opportunities and growth that people are seeing today. And um, without, you know, what you're doing, uh, we would not uh, be in a position that many of us have found ourselves in uh, particularly having to pivot from this particular situation that we've been in from the point that the COVID-19 came into our life and folks had to change their business models and had to find ways to continue to, to be successful as small business owners. So digital marketing has been a major lifeline and you're standing on the shore, you know, continuing to throw that lifeline out and pull people in so they can get to the shore and uh, be successful. So I thank you for that. And uh, the uh, today, I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, what I've learned through the LinkedIn Business Edge. And I got to tell you that it has been one phenomenal program. Cheryl and uh, Carolyn have just been awesome. And um, uh, I am recommending it everywhere I go. And, uh, you know, as I talk to people, I say, well, if you want a little difference, and somebody told me the other day, they said, man, what have you been doing with your LinkedIn profile? It looks great. You know, and uh, so it, the, the proof is in the pudding. I'll tell you a little bit about ICABA and just kind of do a little quick sharing of who we are and what we do. You can actually talk to wealth creators, to entrepreneurs who may look like you, who may come from circumstances like you, who may come from an environment like your environment. And then once you go ahead and grab that baton, you might say, well, this is possible. This individual over here did it, and now I can do it. So ICABA is, ICABA is raising our level of vision, and they're doing a fantastic job. Two. So one of the things that I can tell you is that, um, uh, and, and Dan and, and Lilia, I'm sure you guys kind of recognize that as being a Lumen video. 
And uh, I learned how to make Lumen videos and I learned about Lumen through the digital marketing course last year. And uh, it's been one of the great things. Matter of fact, my uh, subscription is up for renewal. I just got the message yesterday. So, uh, but I really have uh, used that tool uh, in a very effective way to be able to tell our story and to uh, communicate. So how do I get here? Well, my why and how I got here is that, uh, first of all, my mission in life right now is to help others to achieve economic empowerment and to be of service. And I do that in a lot of different ways, uh, particularly as it relates to what I talk about colliding and connecting, where we connect, collaborate, and capitalize on sharing our relationships, our information, and our opportunities with one another that creates growth. Um, this didn't happen just because it came to me one day. My parents instilled a strong commitment and both my sister and I to pursue economic empowerment and serve others. My mother was a social worker who launched a charity named Clothe the Child for my dining room table. And Clothe the Child went on to provide new clothes to thousands of indigent children for over 25 years. My dad was a serial entrepreneur who was also the co-founder and first chairman of the board of First Black Bank in the state of Kentucky. And so it was probably no accident that I became a social impact entrepreneur with that, if you will, DNA. I started my first business, Movies Plus, which was a home entertainment store with records, movies, rentals. And then in uh, March of 1996, I launched WICS-TV, Kentucky's first Black-owned TV station. Uh, after getting out of the, the TV station business, I ended up getting in the radio and ended up in South Florida. It was then in 2009, I launched ICABA. I've been active on numerous civic and community boards really all of my life, helping people to connect and build those relationships to succeed, lead, and prosper. So um, I really am very focused on helping Black professionals to enhance their career, business, and lifestyle, accumulate wealth, and build strong leadership. These are the people who that I serve and work to help enhance their careers and so on, as, you, as you've heard me talk about. Key uh, ideal consumer uh, customer personas for us are our Black entrepreneurs, Black professionals, and then also our corporate members and sponsors. So as you can see here, you know, the entrepreneurs, our business owners, CEOs, managing partners, so on, they're motivated by their self-determination. And, and, and our entrepreneurs, as well as our professionals, come from an extremely wide array of professions and industries. So I could, I could not even come close to putting all of that up here. So I won't dive into too much, but definitely understand that um, extremely diverse. But they're motivated in terms of entrepreneurs by wealth building, success, and recognition, as well as they're very self-determined. I, I don't think you can be an entrepreneur and not be self-determined. Um, top challenges are always business growth and scale and access to capital revenue and business development. And one quick thing about the access to, cal to capital, if you will, that's a legacy issue, okay? Uh, and what I mean by that is that the black community does not have a legacy of generational wealth. So, you know, matter of fact, there is a venture fund out there I know, and one of the things that they talk about is that they've come in to try to fill the gap because there are several stages of fundraising. One of them that you start out with is usually the, the friends and family. Well, if your, your friends and family don't have wealth to start with, you a lot of times don't have that round to even get you started in business. And so that's been one of the real major uh, obstacles. Because when I say access to capital, I'm sure most people say, well, hey, that's everybody. And it's true. But there are just some different, if you will, perspectives on it in the Black community. Revenue and business development is always a top challenge. Building a team of advisors. That also is a unique, if you will, challenge in the Black community because, again, in the same way that access to capital uh, is not there generationally as it is for, you know, other, if you will, um, cultures, the same thing as a team of advisors, okay? If your family doesn't have a deep bench, if you will, of folks who've been in business and already know what it's like to succeed in business, have run companies, run banks, and so on and so forth, then you don't really have the people that are trusted in your life to talk to about helping you with your business. So that's a really key thing. It's another reason why I do what I do is that we are a trusted community for our members. Uh, and then, you know, having the effective marketing to achieve the desired results 
talent acquisition and productivity. Again, some of those things are critical. This is one of the reasons why we're looking forward to our partnership expanding with um, BizHack because digital marketing today is really one of the best friends that a small business person has. And we want to do everything that we can to, to bring that uh, resource into a greater use and application by our members and Black entrepreneurs in general. Our corporate members, they're typically looking to find talent and supplier diversity opportunities. They're looking to fill goals and objectives that they may have. They also want to target uh, and engage with affluent consumers who are leading professionals and, and influencers. And that's typically the ICABA member. Like any other business, you know, they're looking to generate revenue and increase their market share. Our professionals, one of the things that drives them and who they are, as you see the age, 30 to 60, managers to CEOs, again, various industries. But recognition, respect, and reputation, and financial compensation are our major drivers and motivators for them. Challenges is where they're positioned, having the right responsibilities and access and their internal and public profile, building key relationships and building their awareness and their profile, access to information and opportunities, coaching and sponsorship. A lot of these, if you will, are not unique if you, to, again, as I was talking about with the entrepreneur's experience, you know, to any other, you know, ethnic group's experience. There's just different levels based on, you know, the history and the legacy of different groups and where they've been able to achieve and get to certain points. Um, one of the interesting things that, you know, I could tell you right now, if you look at the number of Black CEOs, we just did Black Professionals Month, as Dan mentioned to you, there are less than 4% of CEOs in the country that are Black. You know, and as you continue to look at that, that means that if you're in black, if you're black in corporate America, the further you go up the chain, the less the people who are, are on that uh, level with you look like you and have experiences that you relate. So that's one of the reasons why we do what we do. And uh, we think that we're having some positive impact. These are our keywords and hashtags that are going to be very helpful for us. LinkedIn, without a doubt, is the most fertile marketing ground for. Uh, ICABA and definitely any company like ours. And, um, and so this has just been really great for me, not only in terms of things that I've learned, but also forcing me in terms of taking time and putting things down on paper and planning them out. And the timing for, for, for this for me couldn't have been better. Keywords, Black professionals, Black entrepreneurs, networking, relationships, collaboration, connect, um, the leadership, wealth, growth, career, hashtags, and actually I probably these are all new hashtags I created after going through the, uh, uh, the keyword worksheet and doing that homework. Hashtag succeed with ICABA. Hashtag ICABA develops leaders. Hashtag grow with ICABA. Hashtag collaborate with ICABA. I've got a better feel for how we want to use hashtags and I took some time to do a deeper dive and think about it. And uh, so I want to thank um, BizHack for, for, you know, really, you know, creating that, uh, um, that motivation and incentive and also support. From a thought leadership standpoint, uh, relationships, business growth, career growth, serving leadership are all really kind of key thought leadership things for me. Uh, interesting enough, um, the, I have actually a spreadsheet that I started prior to taking this program that's uh, a thought leadership uh, content spreadsheet that I will be using. And I've, I've used it, if you will, kind of shooting from the hip, but now it's going to be a lot more focused. And um, we're going to use Monday through Friday every day where things that I want to be positioned and seen as a thought leader on will be putting the content out there to support that. As you can see with the words to lead by, this is an example of a post that um, I placed. And this one I actually just placed uh, here about three weeks ago. And uh, obviously you can read it and, and see what it says for yourself. But I'm a major believer in serving leadership. Uh, it ties both in with uh, what I think is the most effective uh, way of leadership, but also at the same time, my way of being able to pursue my Christian uh, commitment and journey and to be able to be able to um, uh, serve. So as I say here, the most authentic, focused, and effective form of leadership, if you're trying to build a committed and high-performing team, 
at the end of the day, people don't care what you know until they know that you care. Serving leadership is really about helping people to know that you care. And when people know that, that, that you care, then they will definitely be more supportive and being able to follow your lead when they feel like that you actually care about what happens to them. So whether you lead a for-profit, nonprofit, government, athletic, or family organizational structure, meaning your kids, your family, your wife, serving leadership is really the most effective. The philosophy is grounded in putting the interests of your team, your partner, your spouse, whoever it is, before your own, serving your partner, your team, your spouse, to support each individual's growth, performance, and fulfillment. If anybody is really focused on helping you to grow and they put significant time and effort into that and demonstrating that they are sincere and authentic about that, I have a hard time thinking that you would not be willing to, to, to reciprocate in some kind of way by at least living up to whatever you've agreed to do or expectations for what you're working on together. It's, it, it really is that simple. Ahas, my God. Guys, last year, after the George Floyd uh, social uprest that you know this not only country went through, but the entire world, companies, organizations, philanthropy went looking to find ways to support, invest, be engaged with Black initiatives. And one of the things that I ended up dealing with was the fact that there was nothing black in Aikaba's name. And so I, I, I really know that just by not having the, the name, if you will, reflect something black. And I saw all these things coming at me, the black this, the black that. And so we lost out on some opportunities, but you know, I didn't want to change my name just to be trendy and take advantage of that. But at the same time, the things that people were looking for and want to invest in are things that we do and things that people that when they find out what to do, that they want to support and want to be a part of it. So I had to, you know, start really thinking about how do I better position myself? And so now on LinkedIn, because of the BizHack LinkedIn Edge program, we have now really focused my profile which I've also taken the things I've learned about my profile as which involves our company profile. And we now have the foundation. I was telling Carolyn the other day that, you know, I wouldn't be surprised that we may have missed as much as $50,000 plus in opportunities that may have come our way if my profile had been better positioned today, particularly for the search engines and with the keywords and also with the demonstration of what we do that is now in my profile that we didn't have before. Um, additional ahas, you know, things specifically that you all will relate to, like adding features, the sections for services, uh, changing my profile photo. One of the comments made real simple thing. Hey, make sure that, you know, your, um, you know, your, your face takes up more of your profile because when people look at it on their phone and it's really small, if it's small in the desktop, it's definitely going to be not able to be read or, 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 or seen when someone's looking at it in the mobile environment. So, um, and my banner, uh, I gotta tell you, I, I think I've got the coolest banner that I've ever had now. And uh, when I go to my um, profile, my banner for me just seemed to like pop out in a very positive way. And I made some important changes that uh, I think that, that really is gonna help. Repositioning my profile to add keywords and services, eliminating competing profiles from my page. You know, I never really actually thought about the fact that those folks who also viewed really were competitors. And it was a real aha moment when Carolyn mentioned and, and Cheryl had talked about that. So really appreciate it. So what's next? Uh, I'm looking for a substantial growth in awareness, engagement, revenue, and profitability. I'm excited about leveraging the newly focused aspects of our profile to generate enhanced awareness and searchability for me and my company. I expect to attract unsolicited business opportunities as well as pursue targeted opportunities with greater confidence and capabilities to convert the, those engagements into clients and members. Optimizing my profile is the first step in developing and executing an iCobbs LinkedIn marketing plan. And with our optimized profile, a solid foundation is in place. I've got confidence that we will develop and execute a plan that will achieve our objectives and goals for iCobbs to raise awareness, engagement, and conversion. 
And I thank Ms. Hack for giving me the opportunity to do that. Bravo. Um, fabulous work and uh, as always fabulous working with you uh, this semester. Jane, you're up next. Uh, I'm gonna call you up and do a quick intro. Uh, we are running a few minutes behind. So uh, please try to keep to time. All right. Uh, Jane Moore is uh, another two-time biz hacker and someone whom uh, I'm so excited to welcome into the LinkedIn fold. Uh, she really understands the, the need uh, for LinkedIn uh, thought leadership. Uh, she had actually already had her profile optimized through a private consultant, but chose to take the course because she wanted to start getting noisy about her thought leadership focus, which is really kind of the higher uh, purpose uh, it's not enough to just have a, a good profile, guys. You need to get noisy uh, about that thing that lights you up. Uh, and uh, we're very excited to share uh, a, a very another bright soul and another person who uh, is giving so much back uh, through her thought leadership, uh, Jane Moore of Papagayo Luxury. All right, awesome. Thank you. Yay. All right, where's the share screen? Let me get on this Microsoft PowerPoint. All right, share, and there we go. Okay, so, um, oh, and it did it not from the beginning. So, oh, there we go. All right, so um, thanks for the intro. I appreciate it. I have loved this class. It's been so incredible and it's been so much fun. And it's nice to have started with the lead generation class last year and follow up with this, so super cool. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about is my mission to create life-changing family vacations in Costa Rica. So about me, so when I was a kid, we would travel a lot domestically. And when one year we decided, it was the summer after eighth grade, my family decided to take our first international trip and it was to Israel of all places. So most people might go to Mexico, Canada, or Europe, and we just kind of went to a very, very different place. Um, what this did for me personally was really jumpstart uh, an even greater curiosity. I always was very curious about a lot of different things, but it really made me more curious about other cultures, about other environments, animals, all the things that we don't see you know, where we live. Um, it also was incredible because it was such an impactful family vacation. So to me, it's, it's made me wanna have impactful family vacations um, that are educational, that are learning, that are growing, you're stretching yourself. So with that, um, I'm Jane Moore from Papagayo Luxury, and my mission is to create life-changing family vacations in Costa Rica. My ideal customer, okay, so this, I just, I'm going to explain a little bit. I'm super proud when I have things like this, which are super ugly, because it means that I'm going against my perfectionist tendency and just getting it done. So this is my super ugly ideal customers. I have one, which is Donnie. I didn't all come out here either, but I'll tell you about him. So my primary guest at the resort at our villas is Donnie. He's between 40 and 65, and he is a very successful entrepreneur. So he's made a ton of money and he has a family. Usually he has two to three children. He's happily married um, or happily remarried, um, but he is all about kind of this along the same lines what I enjoy is educational experiences for his family and bonding experience. So um, he likes things done really well. He probably has a Tesla or another nice car. I, I say Tesla because I think it's a, a nice car, but it's also environmentally conscious and things like that. So he has all these other elements to him, which I'm not going to go into, but that's my main focus. My other, another avatar that I have is I call her Mindy and she's 40 to 60 years old. She is a travel agent. So I work directly with clients. And so that's one target on LinkedIn and elsewhere. And then I also work with a lot of luxury travel agents. So I do, I go to Morocco once a year when there's no COVID for a luxury travel trade show, but I, I work with a lot of them because they can expand my network to all of their clients. So it gives me more legs for my, to grow my business, which is awesome. So Anyway, so those are my two main um, avatars that I've worked with, um, even though I have others. And one of them that I'm developing is I also have another avatar, which is um, personal assistant or, or people like that, because I'm starting to work more and more with that, where they're handling everything that deals with their 
um, person's life and all that kind of thing, whether it's booking their private jet or whatever. My, um, whoops, sorry, I can't see this over here, but but some of my keywords, um, actually these are my hashtags more, is travel, luxury travel, travel agency, Costa Rica, et cetera. So it's really all about travel and tourism and luxury. My thought leadership content strategy. So basically my whole goal or one of my goals is to demonstrate expertise about Peninsula Papagayo, uh, which is a resort in Costa Rica, super high end. I compete with the Four Seasons. So that's kind of the caliber of the people that I'm trying to target as well. So the ways that I do that are personal resort experience because I'm an owner there too. I originally moved to Costa Rica in 2004. We found the resort the same year that the Four Seasons opened, became owners there a couple of years later. And so I've kind of grown with Peninsula Papagayo and I have a wealth of expertise just by being an owner that other people who are trying to rent places there don't have. So I try to capitalize on that. And also I still am ongoing. I'm going to Costa Rica on Saturday. So that's super fun. So every time I go, I, I work on things like taking videos and, and all that kind of thing, but I'm kind of digressing here. Um, another thing that I try, I'm trying to do um, is uh, try to be the opportunity creator. So it's working with my team of um, concierges. I just hired a new guy who's going to be amazing. And um, it's really about what can people do within the resort um, that's incredible. That is maybe it's educational or it's somehow a family bonding experience. Um, and then also being an expert on how and why this is the best location in Costa Rica. Um, you know, it's a gated resort. So there are safety elements, which are awesome about being within the resort gates, the same sustainability that's um, on site. You know, they triple, they do a lot with their water filtration system and recapturing water. Uh, and there's a whole lot of things that they do, um, sustainability oriented, um, and also how you can have such a variety of experience, even just within the resort and not very far away. My biggest ahas, um, I love making videos. So this is crazy to me because I thought I would hate it and I really like it. So I started doing it one time when I was there a few months ago and I just was like, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do wardrobe changes. <laughs> and I'm gonna do all these things. And so it was so much fun. And then, um, so I, I just do little vignettes every time I go and I figure I'll use some of them. I might not use some of them or I'll use parts of them. So that's super cool. And it's a way to kind of mix up my LinkedIn posts. And I can also, I've been using it on my blog posts. And, so I can use it a lot of different places. Um, also learning how to research and use the best hashtags. This has been amazing to me because I didn't really understand hashtags at all. I'm not an Instagram person. So I'm so clueless. And this was super helpful in the class. So I feel like I've done a great job at finding the best hashtags for my purposes. And even when I have, um, I still continue to look up hashtags because when I have a different kind of post, um, like I just did one on uh, an airline and I use some different hashtags on that than I normally would. You know, so so I, I love the tools that I learned to um, learn about what the best, best hashtags are. Um, my cover story, that was so fun to make. Uh, well, we had to do it. And so um, I used, like, well, I don't know if it's really a hack, but I used iMovie. So it wasn't just a straight me talking. I used footage that I had. So it's me talking. And then it shows footage, um, some video I have of a beautiful vista. So that was super cool. And I think it's... Um, I think it's impactful when you go to my profile. And then also just recently, it wasn't even in class. I think it was um, in our pod, um, the pronoun, is it a pronoun? Or I put luxury vacations in Costa Rica. So every time, what, the cool thing about that is not only on my profile up top, but it's also whenever I message someone, it's right next to my name. So it's it's just helpful because then people remember every single time that they're messaging, oh yeah, Jane's in Costa Rica and it's vacations. So I thought those were really super helpful things in the class. What's next for me? Um, you know, I'm just having so much fun with this, expanding connections. Even this morning, um, I was doing things with my connections. So someone liked a post that I did yesterday. I'm like, I don't know this person. So I looked at her. Okay. So then I can try to connect with her. I'm like, Hey, you know, using the tools we've learned and we connected and she's, um, she's a new agency that has, it's a club. So they have to pay to be part of this travel club. I don't know. It's just, a, it's just a different good market for me. So I'm already sending her avails for festive, which is, you know, next week. So you know, it's just, it's just cool because now I feel like it's starting to move more towards 
beyond just connecting with people where it's actually more monetary things are starting to happen. Um, I, I do need to do more with the recommendations. I just got my first one. Someone came and the personal assistant of this person did a glowing recommendation for me, which I, it's awesome because now I can use it and be like, Hey, can you do a recommendation kind of like this one? And then hopefully people will do, you know, another awesome one, but at least they'll have, they'll think they're supposed to. Right. Um, and then lastly, I, I feel like this is just such, um, an idea generator for me because, because we have these pods and it's like, okay, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I have to have an idea. And sometimes I ask my kids, I'm like, okay, look at these photos I took when I was in Costa Rica last week. What do you think? And my daughter will be like, oh, you definitely have to do it. She's the one who was like, you definitely have to do it on the octopus that I ate. It was a dish. It wasn't like a cool octopus in the ocean. So sorry if you're offended by that, but anyways, it's my most favorite dish at Papagayo, but you know, it's, it, but then I can do use these ideas. When I talk with my SEO guy, he's like, Jane, take all of these posts you're doing, add 400 words, send it to me as a blog post. We'll, we'll run with it. So I feel like I can do bits here and I can run with them in a lot of different directions. So I think that's super huge for me. I think that's all I got. So Thanks for your time. I'm going to stop sharing. Jane, I remember when we met a year ago through the, gosh, it was a year ago through the um, Pinecrest training and uh, it's been nothing but a joy. Uh, and then of course, reconnecting after so many years ago when we met uh, uh, as much younger people. Um, you know, one of the joys, I guess, of growing older is to meet people again for the first time. And I definitely feel about <laughs> <laughs> like that about you. Uh, you, you, you and I have had a chance to connect in two totally different contexts uh, uh, spanning a decade. So anyway, I'm, I'm so glad to be a part of the, the, the latest uh, stage in your journey. And um, it's, it's really, it's, this is a fun business to run. I'll tell you, it's not always easy, uh, but boy, um, getting to work with folks like you makes it worth everything. All right, so we're gonna blast through the end of this, guys. Uh, we wanna try to get you out by, by 2.30. Um, let's see if we can do that. So first I did want to share, uh, we measure the outcomes of the lead building course a uh, uh, little differently than the LinkedIn course. In the LinkedIn course, it's really about, are you getting in front uh, uh, of your um, potential ideal customers and are you seen as an industry leader? And what you can see here is just dramatic increases, particularly in areas like post views, profile views, and uh, perhaps one of the greatest uh, results is search results appearances. Uh, this is what Hutch was referring to when he said that by not having his keywords optimized over the last year, he didn't make $50,000 in potential revenue. If they don't see you, if you don't come up in search results in LinkedIn, it is as if you did not exist. And that's what uh, having an optimized all-star profile does, and then getting noisy uh, about your thought leadership. It gets you in front of your ideal customer so you can close more deals. So we're ready now for our class photo. Um, we do two photos traditionally. The first is uh, kind of the traditional grip and grin, and the second uh, is our silly, crazy photo. So um, go ahead, uh, we'll take the class photo now. I'll stop sharing. Awesome. So this is the moment where you need to turn on your cameras, open your eyes, smile. Okay. So one, two, three. Oh, Jane, I'm waiting for you. I'm seeing a gray screen. Jane, Jane. You're on? Okay. Perfect. I'm here. I don't know. I, I don't know. I haven't done anything. Okay. All right. So one, two. Okay, another one, and then prepare your pose for the crazy one. One, two, three, then Great pose. One, two, three, another one, choose another pose. One, two, three. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> I love the crazy poses. We've never ever used this traditional grip and grins ever. Uh, I guess we take it for some, um, uh, you know, <laughs> reason that I can't quite explain, but uh, uh, it's the crazy ones that'll make it uh, in our marketing. <laughs> All right. So uh, I want to welcome back Alex to share with us the certificates from the Leeds of Legend. All right, great, great. So we, we want to congratulate everyone, but let's start with the certificate of completion for Alexandria Condon. 
Then completion as well for Anna Kahina, Atia Atkins, Brendan Stefano, Christo Lachey, Ingrid Faust, Itza Green, Jennifer Gonzalez, Jim McDowell, Megan Murphy, Certificate of Participation for Melissa Castillo, Certificate of Completion for Ryan Kemp, Rem Bembrahim, Shani Perez. Congratulations, Congrats. guys. And now for the uh, LinkedIn Business Edge, Cheryl Cattell. Yes, uh, Certificate of Completion for Audrey Salazar. Uh, certificate of Participation for, for Darren Moob. Uh, certificate of Participation for Ellen Barton. And a Certificate of Completion for Jane Moore. For Jerome Hutchison. For Sergio Menquita. For Suzanne Jewell and Tiffany Thien. Now I'm uh, honored to present BizHack's highest award. Uh, this is an honor that is given by the peers in the program for the person who best represents the BizHack values of embracing new challenges, working your tail off, experimenting and trying new things, and looking at failure as an opportunity to learn. And that, uh, BizHack mentality is how BizHack runs its business and how we encourage you to approach your marketing and your growth. And the winner uh, for the BizHacker Award of the Digital Marketer's Edge is Jim McDowell. Congratulations, Jim. And you guys got a chance to hear from Jim earlier. And the BizHacker Award winner for the LinkedIn Business Edge is Jane Moore. Congratulations, Jane. We're honored to be a part of your journey, guys. And thank you for all that you did to make the experience of this course better for your peers. You guys were selfless in supporting their journeys. Uh, and in so doing, uh, they recognized you uh, as their Biz Hacker Award winner. And finally, I wanted to share very exciting news. Uh, Alex Oliveira is going to be in Brazil uh, for the new year. We're going to miss you very much as you pursue that wonderful opportunity. And I'm, I'm excited to welcome Michael Pace, uh, the CMO of Connected Jewelry, as our next lead instructor. And I'd love, Michael, for you to say a word or two uh, about the challenge that's coming up for you in January as the new lead instructor of the Digital Marketer's Edge, only the fifth in our seven-year history. Thanks, Dan. That's great. Actually, first of all, I just wanted to say congratulations to, to um, all the leads of legend and indeed all the biz hackers. Um, I would say that you now know more than 99% of entrepreneurs about digital advertising. Um, and I understand the commitment that it takes to actually go through the course. It's, a, it's like a real right, uh, right brain and left brain boot camp at the same time. You've got to get through so much. And I think one of the great things that you have now is a degree of confidence um, which is going to be really, really useful to uh, when you go forward. Um, so calling out some specific people who I thought did great, um, Jim McDowell, obviously, um, particularly with the fact that um, he's helping keep all of us safe, you know, with his project um, and making sure that pathogens are delivered safely. So that's, that's great. Um, for Megan, for figuring out her value proposition as an artist, particularly difficult to do, I think, when you're an artist, um, because it's also subjective. Um, for Ryan and Brendan, for being such a great agency and, uh, and applying learning so effectively. Um, and for Sha to Shani and Ingrid for, um, for adapting very quickly from a Montessori client, who they were first serving, to Tidy Peps, Tidy Pets, which is about dog poop removal, um, and um, Atiyah for a great work on, um, on ghostwriting. So she switched from actually uh, working on a newspaper and promoting a newspaper to, to uh, writing memoirs. So I think, um, and Anna, of course, as well, with her hair care product business. I think all of these, uh, everyone um, proved to be incredibly flexible. And when they came up to barriers, they overcame them. Um, so I think that's fabulous. And um, 
with regard to sort of taking over from Alex, I have to say there's I have a huge debt of gratitude to Alex for for helping construct the course and um, and can, and create something that's really phenomenal in terms of its content. Um, and for me, it's a great honor to to carry on and to disseminate that information to people in the future, uh, and to keep entrepreneurs really ahead of the game. Um, Dan likes to sort of level the playing field between large companies and small companies. Um, a lot of the work I've done in the past has been with large companies, but I recognize that when you can help a small company to, trans, uh, to transform themselves, the benefits are so great that they, they really, I mean, they, they make my day. Every day I, I wake up and I get involved in a coaching session, it really makes me think that I'm contributing something to the world. So to be able to do that through a um, through uh, an instructor position is great. So um, thanks very much to Dan for for letting me allowing me to do that, and um, congratulations to everybody on all the hard work they've done. Um, welcome to the elite group of lead instructors, Michael, and I'm so excited uh, to share you uh, and your values with our community. Uh, you and I wake up motivated by the exact same thing, which is uh, there, there's so much we can do for you as a small business uh, to help you achieve your green, dreams of freedom. Uh, and it's the honor uh, of a lifetime to be able to do that kind of work. Um, I did want to share with you guys that the uh, applications are open for our next cohort um, and our number one uh, marketing channel, uh, like so many small businesses, is referrals. And so um, I did just launch a poll uh, encouraging you to let us know if you have someone in your community, in your network, who you think might benefit from the BizHack Digital Marketers Edge Lead Gen course or the Le Thought Leadership course. Uh, you can see the poll now inviting you to just let us know and we'll follow up with you. We also want to hear how you thought about this graduation. We've uh, It's a new format for us as we try to well, uh, you know, introduce uh, two courses, uh, and we know that it can be a little long. Uh, really appreciate uh, your feedback on that. Um, I did want to say that anyone who wants to apply for either of our courses can go to bizhack.com slash apply. Uh, we do offer uh, a scholarship uh, for uh, underserved businesses, and we're happy uh, to uh, extend that to you and your business if, if you're a fit. Um, the average return on investment uh, by the BizHack participant in 2021 in the lead gen course was 29 to one. Um, and we have just still a few seats left in January, our most popular cohorts for both courses. We have given out nearly a quarter million dollars in scholarships to underserved businesses. And this is one of the most important metrics that we track uh, and measure our success. And we're so happy to be supportive of, uh, you know, the underrepresented businesses uh, across the United States and across the world. We've partnered with the office of the Miami-Dade mayor uh, on a masterclass series. And uh, we have uh, three amazing masterclasses coming up uh, in um, 2022. And we hope you join those uh, to sign up. You, all you have to do is go to try.bizhack.com slash MC series. Uh, and you can sign up one for one and you get to sign up for all of them. So finally, we're gonna end with a thank you gift raffle. This is a yet another one of our traditions. We know that your success in the course is dependent uh, on the help and the support of your peers. And so these are coaches and participants who are giving a thank you to their peers for the support and the encouragement that they gave over the course of this semester. And so, uh, Marianne, I know you wanted to say a quick word about uh, the thank you gifts, and then we'll get going through the raffle. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Dan. Uh, and I just wanted to say thank you to all the givers uh, of the gifts and let you know that within a couple of days, uh, the receivers will get an email from me with the gift certificate and instructions about how to, re how to redeem the prizes. Wonderful. All right, so the first is a set of affirmation cards from Ohm Spiration, last semester's BizHacker Award winner, Vera Kolesnik. This is a brand new product. And the winner is? Suzanne Jewell. Woohoo, Suzanne! We definitely <laughs> handpicked this one for you. Uh, we have a one free mindful stress test and toolkit from Suzanne Jewell, and the winner is? It's Tiffany Thien. Congratulations, Tiffany. Tiffany. 
We have free, two free movie tickets from Flipper's Cinema, and the winner is? The winner is Shani Perez. Yay, Shani, you get to go to the movies. We have a free business marketing session with Sergio Mancata. The winner is Suzanne Jewell. All right, two-time winner. We have a free one-hour marketing strategy session with Nathan Kruger, one of our marketing coaches, and the winner is? It's Isa Green. She's not uh, here, but I'll let her know. <laughs> please, Tiffany is offering a free one-hour consultation, and the winner is? Audrey Salazar. Perfect. I think I have a little delay here. Hopefully this will... We have, uh, there we are. Yep. We have a free technology assessment and 12 second ad from the corporate lounge, Crystal Lachey. And the winner is? It's Atiyah Atkins. That's a fabulous one. Good for you. We have conflict dynamics profile assessment in debrief. Uh, this is what I got my uh, wife, more or less. And this is from Carolyn Quinton. And the winner is? Sergio Manquita. Good for you, Sergio. Woo. Free lead generation discovery consulting from Alex. Uh, Predict Media is his company, and the winner is? Megan Murphy. Good for you, Megan. And we get two more t movie tickets. Who gets to go to the movies at Flippers? Anna Kahina. We get a life coaching session from Cheryl Cattell, and the winner is? Jane Moore. We have a MBTI assessment and debrief on Myers-Briggs. This is actually what I got her. Uh, and the winner of, with Carolyn Quinton, and the winner is? It's also Jane Moore. As she got the Beast Hacker Award winner, she got two gifts. Woohoo! One free signed copy of Alex's book, for, If You Build It, Will They Come? And the winner is? Jen McDowell. Love it. I love, I love, I'm sure the retail value of the book's less than 150, but I like that once you sign it, it's suddenly worth 10 times more. <laughs> I totally feel you on that. <laughs> we got a free one hour marketing strategy session with the amazing Michael Pace, and the winner is? It also goes to Jim McDowell, our Beast Hacker Award winner. Good for you, Jim. You've earned it. And let me see. Uh, we have one more, which is nine sets of affirmation cards for the BizHack team. This is a cool one. So Vera um, is the, one of the first people in BizHack history to put an apple on our desk. And so she has given the entire team of BizHack, all of our instructors for both courses and all of our staff members, the OM kit that she's just launched to the market. Vera, Thank you. Thank you for being a two-time biz hacker, for being a biz hack award winner, and thank you for the apple on our desk. We really appreciate it. With that, guys, I just want to say thank you so much for being part of our family. Thank you for your referrals. You know, thank you for letting us continue your learning journey. I'll be in touch with many of you to follow up on some of the Zoom poll results. And with that, have a very, very happy holidays and a really uh, beautiful new year filled with friends and family. Thanks, everybody.